excited to be here with you today digitally, sharing insights and ideas about how we can all design for the circular economy. I am a designer and sociologist and a social entrepreneur. I have created lots of different tools and resources that help people think differently about the challenges that we face in this world. One of my core strengths is understanding the circular economy and how we can apply design and business strategies to helping solve some of those issues. In 2016, I was named Champion of the Earth from the United Nations for my work in helping to bring about a new way of seeing and applying sustainability in the world. So how do we design a future that works better than today? Well, we all know that the planet that we live on and we share, it has limitations. There are only so many resources. Uh, there are the different durations of time it takes for those resources to regenerate or replenish. And of course, there's only so much pollution and waste that the atmosphere and the planet can absorb. This is really the concept of the ecological footprint, which has been around for a while, but it reminds us that it was only a few decades ago that we did start to extract and process resources at a much faster rate than the earth could replenish. So the idea of being able to adopt a circular economy is overcoming some of the limitations that our linear economy has offered us. Essentially, as it stands, the current economic model takes resources out of the natural environment, processes them into usable goods and services, we consume them and ultimately waste them. Either landfill, incineration, or they escape back into the natural environment. This is an inherently wasteful system. But when you look at nature, it is designed to regenerate. Everything that is waste in nature is actually the raw materials for building a new part of the system. And so if we can use this mindset where there's no waste in nature, everything has value, that it cycles through new loops of di diversity and re, um, reconfiguring the building blocks of how we create uh, things, then we can design truly sustainable and circular products and services. So the idea of transitioning from the linear to the circular economy is well underway. We are seeing progressive actions around the world with many companies taking pioneering leadership in this space. Moving from the linear economy to the circular economy requires innovation, a significant amount. We haven't actually come up with a lot of the technological uh, reverse logistics um, and let's just say social change initiatives that are required in order to really truly embrace a more sustainable economy. That's where the opportunity lies. That's why design is such a powerful tool within the suite of tools that people use in order to design more sustainable products and services and businesses. We live in a world that's highly designed. Nearly everything around us has been created by an individual or a group of people to help meet the needs of humans. In fact, design is so powerful, it's this silent social scripter that influences us, us in very subversive ways. I always say, we design the world and the world designs us. We're in a dynamic relationship. The technology that we create ultimately defines the technology of the future. This is what is fascinating about the circular economy is it looks at these two different cycles that things that move through the economy go through. You have the technical products, the goods and services that are made from technically altered products like your cell phone or any technology, but also uh, buildings and products that we create for our daily lives are often uh, very much transformed from the natural world. And so in that case, they need to be cycled back through, recaptured, reused, whereas natural materials such as uh, food waste or paper products that haven't been altered in any way, they can be digested back into nature with, uh, without really having negative impacts. So if we look at these two systems, we can design goods and services that fit within each one. Because the world is made up of these complex systems and systems thinking helps us understand or where things fit within the current economy and the world, the interaction and relationships between those things and how we can create more regenerative and sustainable systems. A system is really anything around us. In fact, we live in a world filled with systems. Our body is one, the cars that we drive are one. They all interact if we don't have fuel or electricity or a working uh, wheel, <laughs> then um, the, the car won't work equally. If we can't create systems that are fully sustainable, then ultimately we will have a lot of negative system outcomes. 
There are many tools that people can apply in order to think in systems, but one of the fundamental tools is seeing relationships that exist between things and being able to identify this linear system and transitioning to the circular system requires us to understand how things connect and how things are lost as it stands from the system. Right now, waste is a massive component of our unsustainable economy. And whilst, of course, waste management is a really important transition, we want to get to a point where we actually don't have waste at all, or pollution for that matter. Unfortunately, we still have a long way to go. A report that came out earlier this year said that we are only 8.6% circular, but at the same time, we are seeing massive changes to many organizations and governments around the world. Circular thinking is being applied to education, to industry, and of course to policy development. We're changing the way we design goods and services by understanding how they work within the current economy by using tools such as life cycle thinking and systems thinking to then be able to design more sustainable products and business solutions. The goal here is to design out waste. We want to figure out how to move from this linear economy where single use disposable products dominate the marketplace to ones where we are cycling those resources through and through so that ultimately we have limited that waste but also we've regained economic value because we are no longer having to do that extraction and processing from the natural world. So let's look at some of the circular design approaches. We have these incredible um, strategies that apply to the design of products and services. Things like a product service system model, which is where you take a product that currently is linear, say for example, a disposable piece of packaging, a coffee cup or a takeout container, and you design a whole service model around that, where you consider the longevity of the materials, how durable they are, and you design the whole system of taking it back, washing it, um, sterilizing it, getting it back out to the market, reused, and then back from the customers back to whoever is using it. Now, there's an example of this um, called Loop, which is now in, in the US and then coming to Europe, which is ultimately where you have the highly durable containers for ice cream or uh, body products or cleaning products, and the customer signs up to a subscription, they get the, serve, the products they need. Once they're finished, they put them back in the box, and when they get their new order, those old ones are picked up, sterilized, washed, sent back out to the manufacturers, and then sent back to the customer. So it's one big loop. And that is a really sustainable way of offering the products to the customer without giving, the, giving in to the disposability problem that we are facing. Of course, we have a lot of opportunities with remanufacturing, repair, recycling. The recycling um, system really works very well when we're maximizing the single-use materials. So PET, for example, is a very easily recyclable material, but when you start to combine that with lots of other polymers and plastics, you reduce the likelihood of something being recycled. The same with a, a coffee cup. It's lined with plastic, so most coffee cups, uh, paper coffee cups in the world today, are not actually recycled at all. You also have the ideas of longevity, creating higher value products that yes, they may cost more, but maybe you could offer a leasing service around that so that the customer gets the value and the higher quality product, but you maintain um, the ownership over it so that you can uh, lease it to other customers when they need it. You've got modularity, uh, you've got so many different strategies that you can apply. Uh, and the most exciting thing about this is that there are new ones being developed by the uh, different companies and, and industries that are pioneering these kinds of changes. So a big strategy is obviously uh, providing repair services. So imagine you're selling a high value product, say a piece of technology, and you know that there are certain areas that break, like the screen or perhaps the, the mechanisms that connect to charging devices, whatever it is. So that you could actually design that product so that there are um, easily accessible repair kits and manuals that make it possible for the customer or a third party provider to repair those products. Now that creates a longer lifespan, but it also creates a higher value proposition for your offering. We've also got services like a lot of apps now where people can uh, essentially sign up to the service that they want, whether it be the re leasing of a cellular device or a piece of technology, and the companies are then owning those products throughout their life. So they're minimizing the waste, but they're also maximizing their uh, ability to create profit because they're not having to go and mine those new materials and uh, invest in all of that infrastructure. They've designed the products to be easily disassemblable and be able to be reconfigured and they manage that whole life cycle of the product so that they can truly offer value to the customer and save costs in the process. 
So we're seeing a lot of these different platforms. We're seeing companies work in industrial symbiosis where the waste of one uh, company or manufacturing process is the raw material for another. And of course, we're seeing these full circular models through the product service system initiative. Now, in order to be able to truly make sustainable products, we need to start by understanding what is unsustainable about what we're creating currently. And this is where life cycle thinking comes in. It's an approach that's based off the uh, scientific methodology of life cycle assessment. And what the thinking tool is, is it really is a way of understanding how products move through the linear economy and then be able to assess where the potential impacts occur and make more informed decisions about where you need to change the design, the materials or the service delivery. Everything that's produced goes through these five main life cycle stages. We have to always extract materials from nature, process them into usable goods, and then we have to obviously package and transport them around the world to the customer where they buy and use them and then ultimately there is an end-of-life component. Now any product that exists you can map along these simple life cycle stages getting an idea of how they interact with the natural environment and potential impact categories. There's lots of fantastic case studies on companies who have used life cycle assessment and thinking to really innovate their products. Levi's, for example, the jean company, did a fantastic project where they discovered that the biggest environmental impact of their product was in the use phase. And so they innovated around that and they also innovated around the materials to help maximize um, the, the kind of uh, not needing to wash the product as much. So there's lots of case studies out there that you can explore that help you understand how your products can be moved from a linear unsustainable product to a much more sustainable closed loop one. Now across each of these life cycle stages there are different considerations. Material and manufacturing obviously we have a lot of impacts around how we're getting resources and the impact to the natural environment in that process, the mining or the um, growing and the practices around that. A lot of third-party certified systems help us understand those impacts and make better choices. But really with circularity, what we're doing is we're looking at that full picture. So we find ways of closing the loop, going from linear to circular. Inputs uh, are built on the outputs of our system. So when we look at packaging and transportation, we're often looking at finding ways of minimizing the losses, how we can lightweight, how we can ensure that there is reusability, or perhaps multifunctionality. And we're ultimately looking at how to create essentially quite complicated end-to-end -end solutions, but the value in doing this is that we actually create much more value throughout the supply chain. So the kinds of things we need to consider is um, what we're offering to the customer and in what format and how we can reconfigure that to be circular. We're also looking at, as I said, longevity and the relationship that the customer has with the products and materials, how we can offer recapturing systems, whether that's global or localized, or perhaps you can work with third-party providers, but ultimately there's an opportunity for us to circularize nearly every single product that exists, making sure that benign materials like the organic ones I said go back into the natural system and the technical products get fully recycled or reused or recaptured. And in order to do this, it's very easy for us to come up with lots of different ideas, to use innovation, to sit down in our teams with our creative development, marketing, with our CEOs, with our decision makers, and to come up with the strategies that will help transform any company from an unsustainable one to a circular and sustainable one, because this is really where the future is. Now, I've designed a toolkit that's available open source that helps you go through a life cycle thinking, system thinking, and ultimately circular redesign process. You can grab that online. And here is where we are today. We are in a situation where a lot of the solutions that came of the past have created today's problems. And we want to be at the forefront of figuring out how to create solutions today that don't become tomorrow's problems. And that does require collaboration. It requires people, uh, consumers, it requires industry and government all working and challenging ourselves to be constantly improving the way we do things, closing the loop, figuring out how to uh, revalue materials, finding better relationships with our customers, encouraging customers to repair, reuse and recycle, but going beyond that. The opportunity here is to reconfigure the way we as a society have our needs met and how we create value and ultimately how we innovate into the future. So I thank you so much for your time. It was a great pleasure to share these ideas with you and I look forward to hearing about how you have created more sustainable and circular business and product solutions for your company and organization. Thank you.